Hello and welcome to another edition of On Our Terms, a video series by AIA Contract Documents. In this video, we're going to be talking about the contractor's responsibilities when it comes to cutting and patching on a job site. My name is Mike Coger. I'm joined by my colleague, Colleen Telling. We're both attorneys who work with the AIA Contract Documents Committee. Uh, as always, we can't give legal advice on this video. But we can tell you about what the AIA Contract Documents say. Colleen, why don't you take it away and tell us about cutting and patching. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Uh, as Mike just mentioned in today's video, we'll discuss a couple scenarios of cutting and patching, as well as how the A201 general conditions can guide a contractor in these areas. In the course of a contractor's work, almost inevitably some cutting and patching will occur. Uh, during demolition and remodeling of a structure, it may be necessary, for example, to cut architectural concrete and reuse it in the finished product. Uh, as a real-world example, Memorial Bridge connecting Virginia and D.C. Uh, was removed and rebuilt in 2019 and 2020. Uh, their demolition occurred in stages, and the contractor was required to cut the decorative concrete columns serving as guardrails on the pedestrian portion of each side of the bridge uh, without letting them fall into the Potomac River below um, and save them for reinstallation. So a lot of precision was needed to cut those columns in sections so that the finished height would still be even along the length of the bridge upon reinstallation. Now fitting those pieces back together takes some finesse and leveling out with new concrete bases to account for differences in height. On the patching side of things, you might think about a contractor erecting uh, steel and forms to pour a concrete wall. When the concrete has cured and the forms are removed, it's important to fill concrete inside the tie holes from the formwork and blend that patchwork with the rest of the poured surface. So the A201 general conditions contain a cutting and patching provision in section 3.14.1 that obligates the contractor to cut, fit, and patch the work properly, which would apply to the examples that I just discussed. Uh, in addition, A201 requires those areas to be restored to the condition in which they were in before the cutting, fitting, and patching took place. While a contractor is cutting, fitting, and patching work, it's important not to damage or endanger those areas, as well as any other areas under construction by the contractor or separate contractors, or any finished portions of the owner's structure. In the example of the Memorial Bridge, uh, the contractor had to be careful not to damage the finished pedestrian bridge when installing the preserved guardrail columns and also exercise care not to damage the columns. This section 3.14.2 makes that a contractual requirement. In addition, if a contractor needs to cut or change the owner's existing structure or construction by another contractor, this section calls for the contractor to obtain written consent from the owner and separate contractor. Under this provision, consent is not to be withheld unreasonably by any party. Of course, unreasonably is subject to interpretation, but in general, details like timing, location, and size of the cut and patch area may need to be considered and factor into an analysis of what may be unreasonable. So with that, Mike, I will ask if you have any questions or comments regarding cutting and patching. Uh, I do not. I mean, I think a lot of what's in here is kind of probably common sense stuff to most contractors. I think if you ever do run into an issue with a contractor, you know, having to cut into existing work and destroying something, it's 
nice to have this in here if you're an owner, but it seems pretty common sense. I think uh, it makes sense. Thank you. I agree. All right. Uh, we do have a contact uh, and resources area. If you'd like to learn more about our documents or see other videos, uh, for that you can go to aiacontracts.org forward slash learn. Uh, questions concerning the content of our documents can be directed to docinfo at aia.org or by phone at the number shown on the screen. And for technical support issues, uh, contact can be made to docs tech support at aia.org or by phone at 800-942-7732. And on a final note, uh, none of the information provided here should be construed as legal advice. In addition, no attorney-client relationship is established through this presentation. And for questions in your specific jurisdiction, uh, please contact an attorney uh, who can guide you best with your state's laws. Thank you very much.